Hi, I'm Mike Langlois, and this blog entry is going to be a video blog, and wanted to respond to some of the great questions that I've gotten in terms of my Twitter post, asking you if you wanted to know anything about gamer affirmative therapy. Um, the most popular question was, well, what do you mean by gamer affirmative therapy? So I think that's probably the best place to start, and that's what this entry will be about. Um, gamer affirmative therapy is a term that I've actually coined to refer to a therapeutic stance which tries to understand a person that does online gaming um, not from a level of pathology but from more of a level of culture. Uh, we have a tendency to take specific groups and culturally stigmatize them. Uh, or take certain groups and culturally privilege them. And the culturally privileged groups often are perceived as normal, and the culturally disadvantaged groups are traditionally seen as abnormal or pathological. So to take an example of a culturally privileged group, let's look at folks that watch Sunday night, uh, Sunday afternoon football. Um, these are folks that you could make the argument and the theoretical frame that they have a problem or a dependency on Sunday afternoon football, that they disrupt their personal relationships with loved ones to spend time watching television uh, for an inordinate amount of time and uh, let it interfere with other activities they could be doing. Uh, such as helping out around the house or perhaps doing their studies or doing work. Um, clearly, that's an example of a real skewed perspective on folks that want to enjoy Monday Night, Monday night Football. Um, that's because that culture is a privileged culture. That's a form of watching a game that is a privileged form of watching a game. And most folks would not condemn it and certainly would not psychoanalyze it or put it psychological pathology on it. So the same example, it, it can be applied to gaming. Um, folks that do online gaming are often misunderstood or mislabeled as people that are addicted to online gaming because they spend a lot of time using the computer or playing online games. Um, another stereotype is that people that use online computers and use gaming online are uh, autistic uh, or all have Asperger's uh, or on the spectrum somewhere. Um, that's especially problematic because it's actually building on another oppressed population, which is folks that learn differently or neuroatypical folks, and suggesting that you don't want to be identified with something they're doing. Um, when in fact, uh, there's really nothing wrong with seeking out pleasure or fun to do things that are things that are consistently done by people that are neuroatypical. Um, so you, you really want to be careful about how you're prejudicing yourselves um, against gaming. Uh, a gaming affirmative stance is the opposite of this. And I think it's probably modeled um, traditionally on uh, the term you're probably more familiar with, which is gay affirmative therapy. Um, for years, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, homosexuality was the clinical term and the pejorative term that was used to discuss specific people who had specific object choices and sexual activities that involved same-sex orientation. And it was considered a uh, pathology. It was considered something that needed to be fixed or eradicated. And for the most part, we've made a lot of progress in the field of psychology so that we no longer look at it as a pathology. Instead, what's emerged is an understanding of the multiple cultures of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender folks. Cultures that overlap but are not necessarily identical. And cultures that have their own set of norms, rules, pluses, and minuses. Um, and so gamer affirmative therapy seeks to do the same thing, seeks to look at people that are identified as gamers, people that like to play online games or play video games, not as a particular case example that has a particular pathology, but rather a variety of overlapping cultures 
that have their own set of norms, their own set language, their own set of positives and negatives. So I want to make sure that uh, we're also clear that if thinking of it as gaming affirmative is not the same thing as embracing every single behavior that a gamer may or may not do or talk about when they're in treatment with us. That just as folks that are gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender have the same possibilities of having dysfunction in their lives, uh, for example, substance abuse or unsafe behavior, those aren't necessarily because they're gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. They're because all populations have some behaviors that can be problematic in individuals. So that we're not treating, for example, a gay person for being gay, but we are treating them for unsafe sex, risky behavior if they're doing it in a way that puts themselves or others at risk. Um, by the same token, not all gamers are using online gaming in a way that is life enhancing. It may in fact disrupt their lives. It may in fact take time away from other things that they need to do to function. But to say that everybody that does online gaming automatically has a problem because they are playing online games, that is the pathologizing of people in a specific culture. So the last thing I want to say about gamer affirmative therapy is it is a therapeutic stance in which you convey a sense that you don't you you think gaming and gamers are part of a culture that they have particular ways of being in the world that you may or may not understand but that you're willing to get to know and understand that culture better as part of helping them with the treatment and that you're not in fact starting from the stance where you think gaming is symptomatic of a problem. If you are thinking gaming is symptomatic of a problem without having tried to understand a gamer in any other way, then you are not practicing gamer affirmative therapy. I also want to say that gamer affirmative therapy is not the same as culturally competent therapy. That there are people that can be practicing the stance of not knowing what gaming is and being willing to have an open mind about it and not pathologize it, but haven't necessarily taken the time to look into what the difference between an MMORPG is versus someone that's playing on an Xbox platform. Someone that doesn't know the difference between a pickup group and a guild. Someone for who those terms that I'm using are examples of things that they don't know. In that case, you're not practicing culturally competent therapy from the point of view of you know, gaming. Um, so those are the sort of things that I could help you with if you're interested. You can read other entries in the blog or you can make time to talk with me. And one of the things that we can do is check with you about whether you are practicing a gamer, gamer affirmative therapy and whether you feel culturally competent enough or what you need to learn to be culturally competent. Whether that be participating in games, trying out an online game, setting up a Second Life account and practicing walking around in it. Things that will allow you to become more familiar with the culture that you're working with. So to summarize, gamer affirmative therapy takes the approach that gamers are part of a culture or cultures, that they're not pathological because they're playing games. Gamer affirmative therapy attempts to destigmatize not only gamer culture, but other cultures that are stigmatized, such as people that are autistic or on the spectrum. Uh, gamer affirmative therapy is modeled in some ways by the cultural, cultural lessons we learned from working with lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people, in which they did groundbreaking work in differentiating between someone being problematic because of who they were or what they did to multiple cultures that have overlapping sets of values and norms. And finally, gamer affirmative therapy is not the same as culturally competent gaming therapy, and that if you're interested in learning more about that or any of the other things I've talked about, you feel free to contact me at the information that you're going to see in a second. Thank you very much, and I will see you again soon.